Alex here with a legal nuts and bolts video on adhesion contracts. I realized in the last video I mentioned I was going to go into prenuptial agreements and uh, child support waivers and cover this topic probably after those, but I changed my mind just because with uh, contract unconscionability fresh on my mind, I may as well just knock this one out really quick. So I'm going to go right into it. If you haven't seen my previous video on, on uh, a contract unconscionability, please just stop this video because it's going to make no sense to you unless you watch that video first and it's the one that I, uh, I just did um, yesterday so um, I mentioned in that video that there were two you, you had to satisfy two points to get a contract voided one is procedural unconscionability which I mentioned was the language of the contract you basically have to show that it's misleading uh, sneakily uh, written put in the wrong category too small to read stuff like that and the other one is substantial or uh, substantive unconscionability, which is oppressive one-sidedness. In adhesion contracts, you actually bypass procedural unconscionability. In other words, you don't have to show one of those two pretty pretty tough standards. It, it completely skips over it. Um, I don't know any other way to explain it except that it makes it way easier to get a contract voided for unconscionability because you don't have to show that it's procedurally unconscionable. Once you show that it's an adhesion contract, you only have to show substantive unconscionability and that is it and that is enough, which is actually pretty alarming. That's basically, that basically is saying that it doesn't matter how forthcoming the language is, how clearly printed it was, how in your face it was, if you can show that it's unfair, it's unenforceable. It's unenforceable, sorry. So, yeah, you basically can just go to court and say, this contract is unfair, I don't want it to be enforced, and that's all you have to do. Well, so of course, you have to show it's an adhesion contract. So, having said that, what is an adhesion contract? An adhesion contract is a contract where you have no choice as to its terms because the other party that you're contracting with is superior to you and they are providing form contracts basically copies that they give to all their customers that everyone has to sign or if you don't sign it you do not get the service or the product I mentioned in the previous video two examples cell phones and uh, cable all the time I mean, people, people go out and buy there's probably millions of cell phones that are bought every year and of those uh, millions of cell phones, most of them end up with, you know, a cell phone provider like AT&T or, um, you know, Sprint, whatever. Those relationships where the customer goes in to get an account with AT&T or Sprint, those are, adhe those are adhesion relationships with adhesion contracts. If you go in there and you have a problem with that contract, you can't get it changed. You don't have any bargaining power. They're the superior party. You're the adhering party. If you don't agree to the terms of the contract, you don't get the phone. It's that simple. And the Supreme Court of Nevada, at least, has defined any kind of deal like that as an adhesion con any kind of contract that, that, that anyone engages in or enters into in that situation as an adhesion contract. It's not the same as a contract between two people, like two friends, or two business people, or two companies, or two corporations. It's not the same. It's an irregular old average citizen going out, buying a phone, getting a plan with a giant corporation. The corporation has all of the power. In that situation, you are signing an adhesion contract. You do not have to show procedural unconscionability. The whole contract is automatically considered procedurally unconscionable because you had no choice as to its terms. If people don't like that, they need to think really about the reality of life because I mean, I, some people say like, yeah, well, if you don't like it, then just don't get the phone. But that's not fair. And it also sort of sets this um, this kind of mentality of um, where contracts are no longer about coming to an agreement. They're all about finding a way to screw the little guy over. If you take away that principle, the adhesion contract principle, it's too easy to fall into that mentality of, you know, these people, these millions of people who are going to sign these, they're not going to read them because they want the phone. They don't care what's in that contract. They're just going to sign it. So why bother trying to make this thing fair? 
We should just make it as exploitative as possible and reap in, reap as much money as we possibly can with it. And so that's where adhesion contracts comes from. It just recognizes those situations where it's just this tiny little person with no bargaining power, this giant company, uh, just printing out contracts right out of a out of a laser printer or whatever a brochure or whatever. I mean, they don't even bother sending it to legal and and, uh, and having you talk to a lawyer or anything. It's just here you go. Oh, you don't want to sign it? No phone for you. Next. That's that. I mean, that's not. I mean, that's it's not a normal situation where two people, two businesses get together and come up with a contract and bounce ideas off each other back and forth, come to an agreement. It's not a normal situation. It's uh, you have no choices to its terms. You take it or you leave it. So in those situations, you have an adhesion contract. Um, if you sign that and it ends up in court, it doesn't matter how um, fair the language was written and how how easy it was to read. All you have to do is show that it's unduly oppressive or one-sided, and that is enough. Some examples I've seen is uh, provisions where, like, um, the company will say that if they win the lawsuit, they get attorney's fees, but if you win the lawsuit, you don't. I mean, that's one-sided. Sure, they can put it in big black ink and right in front of your face where you can't possibly miss it, but it's not like you have a choice. You have to sign it, or you're not going to get the product. So you don't have to show procedural unconscionability. You only have to show substantive unconscionability. You've shown it, done, it's voided, and there you go. Um, some places that I've done this in are like landlord-tenant cases, my own landlord-tenant cases. I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to drag this video out, but a lot of times landlord-tenant contracts will have uh, substantively unconscionable uh, provisions in them. And also, sometimes, especially with landlord-tenant contracts, there's actually statutes that say that you can't put a certain thing in a contract, and the landlord will do it anyway. And in that case, even though you agreed to it and it's in the contract, the statute said that it couldn't be in there. So, I mean, that's just, the court's not going to enforce it because it's, it's illegal. Uh, one example I had in my case was a security deposit where they had a non-refundable pet deposit. And in the Nevada Revised Statutes, it says that the only non-refundable, the only portion of the deposit that can be non-refundable is a, a portion for a cleaning. So, anyway, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and then the next videos I'll cover the uh, prenuptial agreements and the, um, the child support waivers. So. See you guys next time.